So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our second episode of Ram Radio. This is an unscheduled, in-the-moment podcast that we do whenever we feel like it and when Mareka has enough, not anxiety, to put together a planning document. So today, we have me here, Mareka, as I mentioned earlier, or Wamen, and our beautiful co-host, Mr. Ten for Ten. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here, also not anxious, because I do have an outline. Uh, I think it's something that, I don't know if you'd like making the outlines, but I love them. Because it helps give me structure and order throughout this podcast. And uh, I hope everyone's ready because we've got a lot of topics for you to cover. All of them, obviously, Age of Empires 4 related. So buckle up, keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times, and enjoy the show. As we're doing this, I realize the Age of Empires music is playing in the background. So <laughs> for all of you that enjoy that ASMR, you're about to, rem you're about to le lose it. So I just hope that you guys will be okay with that. The Age of Empires music has now been depleted. Now, ladies and gentlemen, like the first thing everybody always talks about, we're going to head into the patch notes and we're not going to talk about all the patch notes because really who reads those and who cares? So, <clears throat> yeah, what did you want to so, say? Can you, I know we're going to talk about the Civ specific ones. There's a couple mm -hmm. Civ specific ones that we're going to talk about. But in general, mm -hmm. in gameplay, read the very first sentence for gameplay patch notes in general. Gameplay patch notes in general. Happy patch day. This minor patch incorporates a few balance tweaks and bug fi fixes. Learn on to read more or read on to learn more. Is that what mm -hmm. you wanted me to read? No. Keep scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was great, though. That was really good. We could read, chat. We could read. It's fantastic. I did make a mistake, though, so good. not all of us can read. I know. You still <laughs> fucked it up. Um... No, uh, scroll down where it says uh, oh, gameplay, right. like a, the header. Oh, I have a feeling this one's going to hit Tim in the heart. Fix, Just go ahead and read it. Fix an issue where scouts can skip their reload animations. Yeah, so um, I'm already a little pissed off. All right. The, <laughs> I don't know how you feel about this. I'm going to take a couple minutes of this podcast to talk about it. Um, I don't know how you feel about this in terms of scouts being able to animation cancel. I thought it was excellent. I thought it was amazing because if you're playing as Roos, as we all know, if you do watch my stream or you watch games that I play, I like to play Roos a lot. This is a high skill thing. This is uh, increasing your APM, increasing your mental bandwidth in Dark Age, right? It's trying to animation cancel. And making sure you're getting those deer as quickly as possible so that you could get on the wolves, get them as quickly as possible, get your bounty as high up as you possibly can, right? For people that are lower elo, maybe they don't have that APM, they just shift click, that's fine. The higher elos, there's a lot of animation canceling, there's a lot of that game going back and forth. And sometimes your opponent, if they're not playing Roos, you can catch them. They're thinking about animation canceling so much and making that second scout, maybe they forget to queue villagers, you know, so you could get an upper hand that way so it's a, it, it, it to me it's a high skill thing and they saw that right and they also saw my back and they drove a knife through it okay i am i am livid i am still livid over this every time i play roost i look at a wolf and i'm like man i wish i could cancel that animation and i can't and i'm upset you lost the one thing that got you to conquer it didn't you Yes. <laughs> now I'm in diamond forever. <laughs> it's okay. Soon you'll be in blood, and then we can blame animation cancelling for getting cancelled. Hashtag cancel animation cancelling. I am a f big fan of animation cancelling being cancelled. Because as someone who sucks, I did not like that. I did not like that they could kill, kill the deer just based off of their skill. And that really pissed me off. So Tim, we're on opposite sides of the world, opposite sides of English skill, and opposite sides of Roos bounty, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know it's completely fine. You know we can be we could be such good we could be such good friends like we are. You know we talk a lot. We you know spend time to play board games. And um, just in the back of the in back of my head, I just know that you're wrong, and that's okay. It's okay to accept people for their flaws, and I accept you for yours. And this is why you're my <laughs> third favorite Roos player. So it's okay. Oh, top three, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, guys, now that Tim has gotten over his little tantrum, I'm joking. He's never got getting over it. He's talking about it this on his stream every single time he plays the Civilization. <laughs> so, if you want to hear more, please feel free to tune in to Ten Four Tim's every night stream. The man does not have a life outside this game, so he will be streaming every single night to make sure that you are entertained. And this is yeah. why he's the top content creator in Age of Empires right now. And I, oh, relax. I will, <laughs> I, I will continue to not only complain, but synonyms, bitch about it. <laughs> I will be bitching about it. I'm so happy for you. I, I'm so glad someone gets to bitch about things. Oof. Oh, oh I love it. I, yeah. I'm so, oh my God. And honestly, Whammon, I don't get, I don't give myself credit for a lot of things. I'm good at bitching. You're really good, I'm at, good at it. The way you <laughs> complain about things, you're like the ultimate form of malt. You know when Beastie malts, <laughs> he, he has he has rage, but and he becomes a meme. But you, it's just who you are. It just becomes yeah. it's like an extension of your being, and I think that's what people appreciate about your bitching too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be uh, why I'm single as well. Let's go to English. <laughs> Let's go to English, shall we? Uh, take a look. <laughs> Take a look at that. Uh, how's that for a transition? Campfire has been removed from the men at arms and now can be found on the scout. It shines brighter like a diamond. Shout out Rihanna with an increase in sight from three to five tiles and now has a team color on the mini map. Wait a minute, you play more English than I do. Um, the reason why I don't play English is because I have a soul still. So why <laughs> or how effective is the campfire to you playing as English and have you even used it at all? Are you questioning that in terms of I am too trash to use all my abilities or more no. as a, is it a useful spell for English to have? No, I'm, I'm relying on you to explain the efficacy of the campfire in new English. Okay, oh, that's, that's much nicer. Thank you, Tim. Well, <laughs> in this case, as an English enjoyer Twitch chat, and I know that this is not just Twitch chat, the people, you know, we are all English fans, except for Tim, for Tim here. And we know that a good campfire keeps the people warm. And when the people are mm. warm and have vision, they're going to shoot really, really well. And this is exactly what I've been feeling with my scouts now holding the power of the fire. I honestly probably used the men at arms campfire twice in my life playing this game for the last few years. And now that it's on the scout, I've used it at least five times in the last week. So oh. most okay. of the time I do forget about the campfire. Let's be fair. I do forget about it, but when I do remember, I have a beautiful vision block for my longbows to just snipe all the villagers on that wood line, and that's why we love the campfire. Yes. So thank okay, you, I can see I can see the utility there because I I know from watching a lot of pro players, um, they are trying to use longbowmen to get around the wood line, but the trees are blocking vision, so they build like an outpost or they whatever. They have to move their longbowmen more into harm's way, like maybe closer to the enemy TC or something like that to try to hit villagers. So I can see how the campfire provides utility there. I can see how it does on maps like Highview, right, where you have a lot of stealth forest. Having a campfire is going to help you out. I guess when when I first read these patch notes about the campfire, I was like, why don't I just build an outpost? <laughs> because, uh, well, how, how much is a campfire also? Uh, uh, is it it's free? 25. It's 25 wood. Yeah. 25 wood? Okay. You build an outpost, that's 100 wood, and you also get network of castles. I get it's a little bit difficult. More difficult, I should say. Because you got to get a villager over there. You got to get him walk over there, build the outpost. It takes a lot of time. I get it. But that 75 wood and that little bit of idle time for the network of castles bonus. Uh, you can sign me the fuck up because that is <laughs> never castles and citadels. I, st I, I've, comp I've been complaining about it since 2021. It's like the most broken thing. I, I really do think I really do believe that. So having an outpost there, I mean, I guess a campfire is just more improv, right? If you're like, if you have your long bows and your wood line, you're like, ah, I can't see, but I have my scout here. He could drop a campfire real quick instead of pulling a villager to build an outpost. So I guess there's some utility. It does make a big difference because this is your early game advantage. When you get the tower, it's like early point five. So your early point five is when you start building the tower. You can't commit because you haven't done enough damage and you don't really know if they have horsemen that are going to take you down yet. And then when your villager has run all the way and needs to run all the way back, it becomes a lot more expensive. But yeah. yeah. Now, I, I do feel like English is now 
honestly a little bit busted with that king as well. I did, haven't played with the king as many times because I do like to rush early game and make sure that I get a little bit of harassment done, especially trying to focus on my early game as I do feel that is my biggest issue. But with the Abbey of Kings, you get a unit that's 200 resources for free the moment you age up. It does have some production time. But the fact that English now has a budget knight is insane. The fact that you can get your knight out, you can even transition into longbows behind it, but you don't need to. You can go 2TC, you can go castle. English is diverse. <laughs> it is no longer just longbow rushing, and I love that. Yes. So, yeah. I remember when I first read these patch notes and I read them on stream and this is why I don't have a YouTube channel because mm. then all the incorrect things that I say will live on the internet for all eternity. So the Abbey of Kings, when I first read this, I was like, the council hall is too good. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't care. No one's going to make this. What I'm calling myself out right now because I didn't understand how wrong I was. The 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 king now and what I'm noticing because of how quickly because you talked about different builds that English can do with the English being able to get a second TC and how quick they can get their second TC. They start building it. What, like five minutes, something like that. Um, remember the old the really old French two TC builds that we everybody thought was busted where you had the school of cavalry, you made one or two knights, and then you put a second town center behind it. And you were so focused on those two knights from the French, they were able to out boom you to oblivion. And then in feudal age, they had a bunch of knights and archers and there was nothing you could do about it. I think English does that build right now. English does that build better. Because you get the Abbey of Kings, which is a free land, or well, I mean, a landmark for aging up, so you don't have to pay anything, like the School of Cavalry. You get a king that's ap that's completely for free, where French needed to get 480 resources for two knights, or 240 for one knight if they choose to do one. And their ability to get the second town center, English does it better. They could do it quicker than French used to be able to. So this build, to me, is absolutely insane. I think it's one it's one of the best builds we've seen in a very long time in Age of Empires. I fully believe that. You are motivating me to get back to Conqueror with just English, and I love it. And I just want to destroy people's hopes and dreams along the way. Thank you, Tim. See, and you know what, and you know what the crazy thing is? Because we have such a difference of opinion about this. You are like, get me on the ladder. I want an Abbey. I want a 2TC. <laughs> I want to do that. I want to eliminate the civilization from the game. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, I, I, I just don't like... I'm not a big fan of civs with huge defenders advantages. And English probably has one of the biggest, if not the biggest. Because it's very... It, it's, it feels like you're getting punished for reacting to your opponent. That's just how I feel. You're I know for English... You're saying I, this I know, is a roost player. What? Oh, go around the Kremlin. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just go around it. <laughs> How am I supposed to go around it when it's on top of your gold and your wood line, Tim? I don't know. Get a ram and leave me alone. Shut okay. up. Let's move on. <laughs> this is mad. This is mad. Wow. Uh, yeah, just uh, go around the Kremlins. <laughs> just go around the knights. Go around it. Okay. I okay. So listen. All right. No. Mm -hmm. All right. We're starting. Mm -hmm. We're starting now. Oh my God! You better get your seatbelt. The, <laughs> the 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 and, and this is what I tell people when playing against the roost too. Obviously, yes, the Kremlin is a big structure. It's a five thousand hit point outpost. I'm not a fan of it either. Chat. All right. I just know it's better than the Golden Gate, and that's why I build it. Okay. So I don't. Want, oh my God! I don't want anyone in chat giving me shit. Secondly, with the gremlins that spawn right, that are uh, 60 food or however much they are, they have a lifespan of 65 seconds, right? So when they spawn all of them, just continue to make units and back up. Just wait a minute. Literally, 65 seconds. Wait, literally just wait a minute. And then go in instead, because all the gremlins are dead. You're saying this, but you know Rus is banned in every pro tournament first. You're saying it like it's so easy to counter, but why yeah, is it Yeah, I banned? get it. Why is it bad? I, you dirty roost player. Probably because it's really good. Can we just move on? Okay, okay. <laughs> well, well, guys, this is the only way he gets to his high ranks. Whenever he does lose a lot of rank points, he does 
have the ability to climb back up and we need to give him something you know he's not it's better than english tim Bruce is better than english and i'm really sad that you're so i don't know what is this a civcist against my civilization again it's okay we you play the worst civs yeah <laughs> i do oh my god oh, okay okay so now with the Wingard Palace landmark, this is something I have not even touched. I don't care. I'm not going to build a Wingard Palace. We still have Berkshire, guys. I can build Berkshire inside someone's base. I can build Berkshire inside my base. Berkshire, even though the tiles it shoots has been made less, we are still able to shoot all the way to China. And yeah. this is amazing for me as someone who likes Berkshire. But I don't see the Wingard Palace getting a lot of airtime. I would have seen a few units pop out of there, but they usually die right after. So if I see you aging up with the Wingard Palace, I'm not going to let you stay in the game for too long. I'm just going to go and eliminate you because you just spend 3,600 resources on building that landmark. And um, I have more units than you. So then we'll, we will end the game and move on with our lives. So, yeah. That's yeah, that's what I noticed. You know, it's funny because I've noticed some of the best landmarks in the game. If you can think of some, whatever the best landmarks. We used to talk about the MIA for the Ottomans. Um, we would talk about the School of Cavalry. We could talk about the Kremlin. We could talk about Akin Chapel. Those are some of the best ones, right? And I think one of the reasons why they are the best is because they have an effect or some kind of economic bonus immediately the mia immediately becomes a siege workshop and gives you free mangonels over time school of cavalry immediately becomes a stable the kremlin obviously for defensive purposes and those gremlins when you need it so you can get it whenever if you need them after you know a certain amount of time it's still giving you that immediate start to build those supply tickets the Aachen chapel immediately boosts your economy you don't a lot of times in age of empires what i've noticed the ones that take time to pay off don't end up being that good because a lot of the times you don't have that time, just exactly like you described. With the Wingard Palace, it's like, well, I just paid 3,600 resources to get this landmark. Now I have to pay more resources and take train time to actually make it pay off. And it just never ends up getting there. You know, It used to be where you would make the wingard army that had a trebuchet in it and because it was so cheap you were able to get those trebuchets basically how whenever you wanted you didn't even need wood because it would only be a hundred wood to get a trebuchet and a couple other things so that's why it was so good now the berkshire it gives you instantly it gives you that tempo it gives you map control it gives you so many things where i agree with you like there's like no I, I think if somebody builds the Wingard Palace, they're asking to lose a game. Mm. Except if you're so far ahead that you're going to win anyway, but then you risk throwing it because you just threw away this many resources. I'm actually waiting to see if they'll give you a free training for the first one or have one where, just like Byzantines, you get that 10-second pause and they come out. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like it needs a little bit of oomph, and, but it doesn't feel like English needs a little bit of oomph. <laughs> The, the thing is, now with English, you have choices. And this is what I wish we had in more civilizations, that you had a choice. But most of the time, you just have, this is a better landmark. Can't we just get all the landmarks to be kind of kind of good so that we can have choices? Because if I want to be a longbow rusher, I can make lo be a longbow rusher. If I wanted to be a king, queen, I would be a king, queen, you know? And with HRE, I, I know that they're trying to do that with the mind work as well. But the chapel is just, again, so much better. There's very few instances where this is going to be, I can't think of a single one where it's going to be used. So this is one of right. those where I would just, Relic, please just make things even so we can have choices and diversity on ladder. That is what we want or what I want. So I think there's a right and a wrong way to make something even. And I know you're not going to agree with me, but mm. I think for Abbey of the Kings, they did it the wrong way. Mm. where the reason why the Abbey of the Kings was never chosen was because the Council Hall was that good for tempo. It's one of the best landmarks. It's has some of the best tempo. It's three archery ranges immediately. You could spam Longbowman out every eight seconds. Immediately, you could do that. So basically, instead of doing anything to the Council Hall, 
They kept buffing the Abbey of the Kings over and over and over again. So now it's better than one of the best landmarks in Feudal Age. That's what makes it broken. It's not it, like that's not a good way to do it. You could bring up the Abbey of the Kings a little bit, bring the council hall down a little bit. Yeah. That's what gives you choices. Because so now you just have two broken landmarks in Feudal Age. So what about Rus? What would you change about their, <laughs> their Castle Age landmark? Are we ever going I to was, the uh, uh, I was not expecting a follow-up question. Let's <laughs> let's continue. <clears throat> so Byzantines, right? Byzantines, the next one. Okay, as you guys can see, I'm a little bit biased towards Ruse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This weekend, when I was casting Low Elo Legends, there was a Ruse versus Ruse, and honestly, I just knew Ruse was going to take the W in there because. It was just given at that point. <laughs> it's the bro most broken civilization. Yeah, that was the joke, by the way. I do know you gave me the look, <laughs> but for those of you who are just listening, I did get the look, don't worry. You guys didn't just give me the look from home. Tim also gave me the look. So, mm -hmm. walk us through, Mr. Tim. What, on Byzantines? Yeah, no, all civilizations first, because I have no oh. idea what your knowledge is on water, and I sometimes want you to be wrong, because you're always so right. <laughs> Don't give me that ego boost. We know that's not true. Um, Arrow ship's food cost reduced from 90 to 80. Spring old ship food cost reduced from 120 to 110. Now, I I really really enjoy how when you're when you're playing in naval warfare, you still need all three resources. I remember way back when. It used to be food and gold, or not food and gold, excuse me, wood and gold to do everything. So then it became a point where it's like, yeah, I need the fishing boats to make villagers and then like maybe like land units and stuff. And that's what kind of spears. But like you still need to have a stable economy, both land and with fishing in order to make most of the boats. I think the demo ship is 80 and 80 for wood and gold. But the spring gold ships, obviously, you know how uh, they are expensive and how they got decreased just a little bit for food. So I like the design. I like what they chose to do. I think somebody smarter than me might give some insight as to why did they decrease it by 10 food instead of for any other particular reason. I'm not really sure how that factors in to the naval war play. From what I see, just from a layperson who plays hybrid maps just because I don't have enough civs to ban, on the ranked ladder, uh, I don't see much of a difference. Mm. Oh, same here. I, I, I can see how it would maybe have an influence in terms of you would have to have one villager less on food, maybe, to keep pumping out these ships. But I don't even think it's that much of a difference. The problem is this also allows you to have maybe one less fishing ship before you can push out. But I don't know what the significance of this is going to be, and I don't think we've seen any of this in the tournaments as of yet, but there's still time. Maybe someone's cooking. I'm expecting Vortex and Lucifron to school us into why we are wrong and how this will be a distraction. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah. But on to the real one that most people molded about on Reddit. Thank you, Reddit, for always being the greatest molders. Uh, Byzantines. I don't know how Byzantines work. I just know that there are always horses in my backline. And then they have longbows as well. And I want to cry many tears. And if there's not longbows, there's horses in and Keshiks. And as a not a fan of Mongols, this is my nightmare civilization. They just mm. have everything that I fear. So, Tim, I would like you to take us through these changes before I start crying. Absolutely. Um, let's get a red tissue and then we'll proceed. <laughs> Byzantines. Increase the mercenary contract research time from 0 to 10 seconds to allow for adjustment in case of a misclick. Now, when I first read this, I was thinking, well, why isn't it just five? The whole idea of this is obviously, you know, they talk about it for the misclick, but the initial change for the Byzantines was this is instantaneous. Instead of costing 100 oil, it costs zero oil, which makes a lot of sense because if you have a contract and you're signing a piece of paper, I don't think you need 100 oil in order to do so, realistically. Secondly, with the misclick adjustment, I didn't really think this mattered because I was like, oh, like just click the right one, forehead. But there's a lot of times where people that, I mean, I've played a decent amount of Byzantines, but 
there are people, other people that I know that are Byzantine mains. And I'll give a shout out to Theore, who's one of your mods. She actually told me this once, where she lost a game because she misclicked and it was instantaneous and there was nothing she could do about it. So having that little bit of change, is that 10 seconds going to make a, a big of a difference? No. I think this is just more of like a quality of life something and I'm okay with it. Um, second one, Droman food cost reduced from 110 to 100. Uh, refer to my previous thoughts about the arrow ship and sprinkled ship or lack thereof, I guess. They're just trying to make it as, you know, uh, systematic between all of the civilizations. But the Droman is still bad. So no one's going to make it anyway. Or go Byzantines on water. Well, I, I know you say that this is not significant, but I think for most civilizations that were very scared of this rush, especially on smaller maps, this was very big. The fact that we now have 10 extra seconds to be able to handle what's coming, I don't know. I, I, I appreciate those 10 seconds, honestly. So thank I think you. Really. My, I think my biggest issue with the Merc houses from not only playing Byzantines, but playing against them is I don't know what contract my opponent picked. Mm, that would be great. And, in the Abbasid, like uh, the difference is in the Abbasid dynasty, you're watching their wing constructed. You know what the wings look like. You know what wing they're going. For Byzantines, the Merc House looks the same if it's Silk Road, if it's Eastern, or if it's Western. It just looks like a normal Merc House. And I think by having that gives me the extra ability to be like, okay, this is what contract they're going to make. It makes me learn a different sieve that I might not play and be like, okay, I could see these little. Uh, these big uh, bows or something out of the Merc house. So I know they went Western contract and I know long bows are coming and then I can plan for it. You know, the only way to know is if you see a pack of longbowmen come into your base or you scout five longbowmen come out of the Merc house, then you're like, Oh fuck, I guess they went longbows. Now you got to scramble. And you know, if you're thinking about countering, you got to build a stable if you didn't already, uh, and then make a couple horsemen and then actually do something. And by the time you think about doing that, the longbowmen are already shooting at your villagers, right? So just, I, I really, really like civs. And one of the reasons why I gravitated towards the Byzantines is their counterplay. Mm. You can destroy their aqueducts and cisterns so they don't get their bonuses. You know, that kind of stuff. I don't think that just because the Merc houses, you can't see what contract you go, you're eliminating that counterplay. And I don't like that. So you're advocating for visibility visibility thank you yeah i agree oh yeah oh definitely sometimes as someone who loses my scout quite easily i will place my scout close to the enemy merc house just to see if anything will pop out that gives me a little bit of information but by the time i react i'm already dead granted i don't scout enough but i still think that if maybe if there's a little bit of a flag like hey we're going for this boys then we would know because Byzantines, historically, they were a very proud civilization. They would have told us what they chose. So, yeah. Relic, please put little flags in. That's all we're asking. Give us some visibility. But I'm glad that and you can give us insight, because I can't. I just know I if they If they end up doing that, mm -hmm. the changes to the Merc House, we will be taking credit for it. Mm. And this was our idea. And if Relic makes that change, you can thank us already. Actually, you know what? Just thank us in advance. You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope that everyone will have their thank you buttons ready. That is what, all what we're asking for. Leave a like. Leave a, I don't know, a nice comment. Say Are there any great. primers? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, God. <laughs> all right. So, guys, that, that's it for the patch. I'm not going to go too deep into the patch. I don't care about the rest of the patch notes. I know that Tim cared about the animation cancelling. But honestly, when we look at the rest of the stuff, there are some bug fixes. fixes. They apparently say we can't desync as much anymore. But my, my ass that disconnects all the time, not all the time, every now and again disagrees. So, that might be a me problem, though. So, we'll see. Now, guys... Our next thing that we wanted to touch on is map hack allegations. Now, for the listeners to of this, you will probably not get this segment, but this is for the viewers. Now, this is a part that I really wanted us to look at to talk and then talk about the fact that we still have so many map hackers currently in Age of Empires. And this is a big, big issue for a lot of people who are, you know, playing the game. 
Um, I am someone who probably plays a lot of team games, a lot of them, and I think team games are where, is where this completely shines. But we did get someone to send us a replay. Oh, not a replay. They sent us a match that we can check out. And this is going to be... Do they hack or do I suck? That's it. Did they hack or do I suck? So our person today is Drought Lewis. And Drought Loser, he is losing against me quite often on the ladder. He always tries to snipe me, but luckily, big L. And we <laughs> found someone that we can spectate based on uh, their history that's open. So this guy is not, Full Bloop is not the man who's hacking. He just has an open match history. And we found a map on Cliffside where he lost against this alleged map hacker. Now, Twitch chat, I want us to watch this and decide together whether this man is a map hacker or not. So, Tim, are you, is your vision ready? Do you see what I see? I have my glasses on. I'm yeah. ready to go. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Oh, this is obvious. Why? No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, whoa! Just like <laughs> We're that. five seconds in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, first things first, the person who's accused of hacking is this name. And this is something that... Oh my gosh, Jean with two houses? This guy's beating diamonds? Oh. Building two houses like that? Maybe he just wants to give Jean all the building time. Okay. So, I think the really important thing, too, while we're observing this whammon, is to make sure free camera is off. So we can yes. see, yeah, because I I want to see what he's looking at consistently. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not a professional map hacker, uh, caller out or extraordinaire. He, he could be. Out? Right. I mean, there's a couple things he could be doing. One, he could be looking at the areas of the map and where the sheep are. Mm -hmm. Or secondly, he could be shift clicking where scouts are going. Right? So if we see that he's going into these particular areas, he moves a scout in that direction. Mm. Well, that's a very general scouting pattern. Right. Oh, I he, think what he's... It, it, it looks like he's glancing. He's glancing. He did look a little <laughs> bit of where the opponent's town center is. Now, do we need a do we need a distinct conclusion at the end of this? I think I think we're going to get a distinct conclusion at the end of it. Okay. I believe so. I I would like to see if he's looking at his opponent's scout as well. Apparently this this match is very very conclusive. So we'll find out. We'll find mm. out. Okay. So, um, his builds, his builds, fine. Mm. Yeah, you know, I guess. You know, he's gonna be, he's using John and a couple villagers to go up, which is something that I like to do too. Um, actually, if you're gonna be doing this, your build should probably be about like four minutes flat. So he's gonna be a little bit late. Um, but it looks like he, I mean, his sheep counts really good. Let's look at just really curious if you want to put free camera back on. Let's see uh, how many sheep his opponent has. See, that's an issue. Oh, oh yeah, never mind. Sheep. It's not an issue anymore. Oh he just didn't. <laughs> he just didn't go over and deposit them, so that's kind of an issue. That, that is a very big issue. Very relatable issue. And he instantly transitioned to farms. We can talk mm -hmm. about that build at a different point. This is now. Oh, and he's not making any villagers. Oh my God, Fablob, what are you doing, sir? Oh no, and he's putting the sheep on that side away from the chapel. Fablob, stop! Okay. See, now I'm hovering into the do I suck category. Yeah. As we see that. But, you know, but the jury's still out. We'll try to figure it out. It goes for a little Jean d'Arc tower rush in Field Age, which is pretty good. I mean, he did scout this area before to make sure that Jean had a tower in a good place. And this is a really good tower spot, right? Now Jean is level two, or has the ability to get level two, but still needs to get that tower. And now she, they just cancel it. That's crazy. Drudlus is actually in chat and telling us that we're missing the evidence for okay. reasons unbeknownst to me. Apparently, we're just missing it by... 
I mean, that was a very obvious raid as well. The man went in. He's watching the base. I mean, he is looking at the base a little bit long, right? Like, it, he looks at it like he knows what's going on. So, go ahead and for... Go oh, ahead and reveal oh. the whole map. Reveal the go whole ahead map. and reveal the map. Yeah, let's take a look here. Because if he's... <gasps> If, if he's positioning oh. these knights... But look at that! He's looking! He's looking or cooking. One of the two. And he does not have a scout there. Oh, he's looking, Tim. This man's looking. See, because this is the thing where he he sends his knights to the northern side, basically where the units aren't. I'm assuming is what I'm supposed to be gathering from this. And then hope probably, if he is doing something like this, then what I would imagine is as soon as those villagers go back is when the knight starts charging in. And this is okay. Yeah, that, that one's fine. He's fighting his best fight. The spearmen are doing amazing damage. Mm -hmm. Oof. Men at arm going down. That's a destruction. But... Mm. Yeah, he does win this fight. I don't know if I can say that this man's happening. Yeah, give me some, uh, give me some thoughts and opinions, chat. What do you think? I mean, from, from just looking at this, I'm not looking at anything that's like. I mean, yeah, he's looking at the opponent's base, you know, and trying to figure out where to send his units, but I'm not seeing anything, I guess, drastic or blatant. Mm. But I usually give people the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I also also trust people way too much. Yeah, like, oh, what are you looking at, sir? Oh, maybe. He's... I don't know. That that was just like a my hands are slightly dented movement. See, right. he's not good. His micro is pretty all over the place. I'll be honest with that one. But I mean, he's not looking at them very badly. Oh, the archer doing work, but um, Jean is just snacking at the moment. I know. Oof. She's about to She's bleed out on the battlefield here. Oh, look at the... Oh, She's my love. My love! My wife! Look at her go! She is just running. Oh, gosh. And the archer saves her in a nick of time. Okay. That was... Again, it could have just been a movement. Okay. This could be where he clicks. Like shift clicks his units in. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Chief. He's looking at his base. I look at my base too. Right. He's now post there, way. spearmen. He made archers because he knew that there were spearmen already, right? From the first engagement. Yeah. And he's so there's not like information that he shouldn't have. Rodlus. This is a tough one, brother. This is a tough one. I... I'm... I might be on the other side, though. I might be on the side of... Is he hacking or do I suck? I don't know. Let me just open the screenshots he sends me. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's show the screen. Let's show the stream. And the viewers, the screenshots. I will, I will. I'm just waiting for... to find them. Find them. Okay. He did send me the shift clicking. Let's keep... Okay, okay, okay. He is... <gasps> did you see that? Did you see that, Tim? <laughs> I must have missed what you're gasping about. Guys, did you see <laughs> that? I... The... Tell me someone saw that. The guys, he was looking at that... At that age up. As it was aging up. Come on. Mm. He, he was looking at that landmark as he was bitty building it without any vision. A lot. Okay. That was the one. That was the one instance where I might have compliments. Maybe he heard the okay. sound. It was before the sound. It was before the sound. Way before the sound. He was staring at it. I am checking his view. This is his view. No, I mean uh, his vision. Oh. His vision. Okay. This is tough. Because I don't usually... 
I don't usually check if people are map hacking. Really? You just accept it and live on with go on with your life? Oh, well, I just assume that anybody who beats me is cheating, and then I just move on. Oh, this guy <laughs> just lost your wife. I know. That's He's not a good care. He's not a good provider. Not a good caretaker. Oh, you would have been so much better for her in this game. Right. Even right. if you didn't have vision of the whole map. I mean, he, he's looking at a lot of the resources. If he runs into a prelate randomly. Mm -hmm. See, this is one of those. He could just be sending his units everywhere because they are being sent everywhere. I mean, he, he did spot. So on the western oh, side, he went, went exactly where a relic went. And exactly Look at that eastern side. side. Well. Look at the yep. eastern side. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Okay. All right, okay. all right, all right. All right. All right. That's enough. We got it. Shut it down. It. We got it. We got it. There's no no way in hell. Exactly. Like, right where the relics were, two out of two times. I get it. Where you're like, oh, you know, there's probably a relic over here just based on, you know, whatever. You you could infer that knowledge. And based on the map, you could infer that. But exactly where the relics were? Exactly? Oof. I don't think so. And just I don't like think so. that, we have... Let me get a hammer. I don't know. We need mm -hmm. a soundboard. Cal? <laughs> I think yeah. we have concluded that the man is... Is... He's sus. We'll and if it's it, us. and if it's somebody, if it's people like us, women yeah. that, that that are that usually give people benefit of the doubt, mm. that don't, you know, we think that people are honest players because RTS players. I don't know why they have some more. They have a better ethical code. They have a good morale, like compared to you know, twelve year olds that play Fortnite. The so you could you kind of you lull yourself into that shit like this doesn't happen, right? But yeah. Oh, he, and he uh, was looking at that army, wasn't he? Oh my goodness, you know, he's staring. Yeah. You know what's weird as shit is he looks at the army and then the knights still charge in and take a brace. Yeah, you know? He, we've, we've seen he's not he's not the best player. Like, he, he oh, struggles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for oh, sure. Poor guy. For sure. He did snack on a few relics. Okay, guys. Well, from that, we have concluded that Drot Lewis does not suck. Very nice. Or whoever that player was. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. The, no, Drodlus sent us this because he said the guy was hacking in his game as well. Mm. So, Drodlus, I don't know. It has been. You concluded. know what? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's both. I wasn't impressed by that player's play either. <laughs> Maybe both. Yeah. Drodlus, <laughs> I'm gonna say it's both. Yeah. If you lost against this brother, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we technically we only concluded this guy's hacking. True, Drodlus, you still suck. Because, you know, <laughs> I can beat you in a 1v1 all day. And honestly, Drodlus, you can 1v1 Tim as well. And if you beat him, then you can play me. Ooh. Yeah. I'm like the... <laughs> I'm like the I'm like the secret service. I'm like the bouncer before yeah. you get into the to the main event. <laughs> oh we, we got, the, the reason is because I beat Tim. And oh my god, I threw for content for sure. the fifteenth time. Uh, I promise. <laughs> no. <laughs> it. No. God damn it. Okay. Okay. From now on, we'll just make it the meme you threw for for content. I just wanted to know yeah. what the real truth is. I like that you don't lie to me. Okay. I would never. 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 Okay. Absolutely not. Look at this man. Oh my god, I feel so much pressure. That was a dance, guys. <laughs> Woo. You can't lie to us, to us when we watch you get wrecked. Oof. And it oh, was Simon, I lie to you five times a day. I don't give a fuck about you. Dude. I don't give a shit. I just, I just love that we were on stream shit talking each other. That was a good moment for me. You know, when, yeah. when Cow and I played against each other, we found each other on ladder. I was on, on, on the Discord because I instantly joined Discord when I noticed he was in my game. And I was like trying to trash talk him and he was full focus. He just muted mm -hmm. and he focused and then he won. But, but it was close. It was really mm -hmm. close. So, Tim, together, you and I will one day beat Cal. I think we can do this. Yeah. I think we could now. Right now? Yeah. Together or solo? Together. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> to be one okay cool absolutely well, i'm two... very realistic in my talents as an okay. aoe player well we the two of us could probably beat beastie you know so it's not really setting the standard i beat right. beastie with bella so i i was it was really funny when he said that we could 
we wouldn't beat him 2v1, but it was very close. He really almost took us 2v1. That was wild. Damn. That is wild. <sighs> Man. Sometimes. Oh, oh, wrong button. Wrong button. Okay. <laughs> That's okay, guys. Close enough. So, um, basically, what we wanted to do, and apparently, my browser source is just a little bit busted. So, I'm quickly going to put the thing in, because, you know, this is how we roll. Um, <laughs> give me a second. Put that in. No, we're not going to be doing that. I will just put screen capture, like a professional here. All right. Oh my God, that's so big. What are we doing here? Okay, guys. So this one was already announced, but in honor of our very professional segment, as you guys can see, we want to talk about the tournaments and upcoming esports and also make a little announcement or two here and there so you guys can be aware of what's happening and what's not happening. So for those of you who did join the stream where Beastie and I talked about what's next with Steel Series, you'll see what's happening. But first, let's talk about the first LAN of the year and let's watch the video alongside that. So Tim, shut your dirty mouth. Muting. <laughs> of the video. This is a very professional stream. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, this is a literal circus. Oh, come on. This is, there was always going to be a circus with you and me. Come on. So, when I saw this trailer the first time, I was shook i was shook mm. absolutely shook because the thing is i knew it was happening right but i think the power in presentation was top notch oh my gosh no this is um this is top 10 and guys tim and i will be in attendance we will yep. be going to norway for this out of our I own pockets am, i am flying from america baby and going right to Norway. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Need this is not only so <laughs> this is not only the first time I'm going to be in a different country. This is going to be the first time I'm going to be on an airplane. And this is going to be the first land that I ever go to. So I'm really, really excited. Have you ever been to a gaming convention? Never. Oh. <gasps> Really? You're in America, the hub of gaming conventions. I know. <gasps> okay, gaming know. conventions, that's our goals for next year. Next year. Mm -hmm. This year, we're just going to focus on the lands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. I hope for people that watch on YouTube, they're going to watch after, and people that are in chat, I really, really hope you guys come. You know, I, I, I think it would be so much fun to meet all of these people that I talk to in chat on a daily basis or people that I see in other people's streams that I talk to. I think it's because our community is as, let's see what the word is, compact as uh, compared to some other communities. There sometimes you're going to walk up to say so, somebody walks up to Whammon and they're like, oh, I'm this person from chat. You're, we're going to be like, oh shit, that's you? I've been talking to you for months in the chat dude what is up like i just i just want to meet i just want to meet you guys i want to be a part i feel like this is such a good integration into the community it's going to be it's going to be so much fun no the the thing is because you haven't been at a LAN. i think this is a very good entry level LAN for you because it's going to be small there's going to be mm -hmm. like a handful of pro players and it's going to be a, a small community event it's a test event so we want to put this as a, an event to test for future big things that may happen where we maybe do regionals we have like world qualifiers all around and then all of a sudden maybe a LAN at the end of it so this is that that first step and this is going to be cow's first baby and he's 23 guys so you know he's still cooking and honestly I'm, I'm excited to see what he whips up but we want to be there for that we want to see what this man pulls out of the norwegian hat of his because you know i don't know that man feels like he can carry a hat with very deep pocket inside 
So, uh, how's a LAN different from a tournament? When we're saying LAN, we mean a tournament that is a LAN. We're not going to sit there or bring our computers and play Age of Empires together. That's just mm. nerdy. We're not, we're not, we're not losers, please. I guess for to, I know there's a lot of people that know this already, but LAN stands for local area network. So you all have to be in the same area geographically because it's mm. local. You have to be in the same room. <laughs> to do this so this is everybody instead of playing online everybody conglomerating together sitting down playing a tournament mm. yeah so this is guys if you're coming let let us know oh let let cal know so he can plan for your ass we're just gonna be there to enjoy the the, the show and make the show and be the show and support the show because we believe in aoe esports as the future because we are all losers here together who are all watching games together and playing games together like the people we are hell yeah boys hell yeah yep yep big yeah. loser hi hi <laughs> hey i do age of <laughs> empires for a life what about you oh, in my free time what do you do for fun <laughs> aoe huh <Yeah. laughs> have you heard about this game age of empires you're gonna love it Oh, the funny thing is, whenever I meet people and they're like, they're like, oh, do you play games? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, what do you play? I'm like, Age of Empires. I'm like, you don't play League or something? And I'm like, no. Yeah. Valorant? No. I like no, strategy see, in, games. In, in the US, it's, bro, you don't even play Call of Duty. Yeah. Oh, God. South Africa is also Call of Duty all the way. CSGO like, has no. more popularity recently, but. Hey, if I was, if I was 16 slugging mountain dew eating doritos absolutely get a little cheese on the joysticks you know what i mean Oof. with some call of duty absolutely and i was that because i grew up in america but now as a 30 year old you wash your hands uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking a right i wash my hands <laughs> before you touch your mouth right oh before oh before i do anything oh anything yeah okay before and after okay wow <laughs> Wow, this is a, <laughs> this is the voice of a grown up, guys. Damn! But we're not just doing this LAN. We're gonna be taking Tim on a Euro trip. This is the plan. We're cooking. We're cooking. We're waiting for his passport. We're waiting for finalization of some people. So, guys, if you have any crazy suggestions, let us know. I was talking to Beastie about this today, and I'm like, you know, I would love to bring him to Serbia. And he's like, yeah, we could show him a really good time in Serbia. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> there's so much to do. <laughs> <laughs> so much to no we, we, it's interesting it's like a whole alternate universe and i told him this as well every Norwe of norwegian every european area is so different and we're gonna bring a cultured or uncultured american into our midst i'm sorry mm -hmm. i'm sorry for calling you that i didn't mean that oh no no, no i own that okay definitely cool okay yeah. as long as we have some understanding awesome oh yeah oh yeah i mean uh, to, to put it bluntly my english fantastic I feel like my vocabulary, it's very good. Um, I'm a very good, I'm a very good writer. Uh, but any, literally any other language, I'm like, you need English, please. <laughs> it's okay, I'm we'll be your translators. We'll be your translators. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Yeah, no, so guys, also what I want you guys to understand is if you've ever been gaming, if you've ever been to a gaming event, you know that usually it's loud, it's rowdy, there's a lot of kids this is not one of those communities. The AOE community completely blew me away the first time I met the people. It's like you're walking into a group of people who are just adults. And yes, you have young people, but even the young people are real adults. You can have a conversation with them. They don't blow up their cheeks, except for maybe Marine Lord. But aside from that, everybody's normal. Oh, yeah, Cal hasn't been to an event. So maybe aside from Cal and Marine Lord, everybody's normal. Yeah. So. Yeah, I uh, I also don't plan on being sober for a second <laughs> of that event. <laughs> Tim really thinks he can afford Norwegian alcohol. Even on I a, can. On a doctor's salary, I don't think that's enough, Tim. There's no way. How expensive <laughs> could it be? There's no way. Five minutes later, but we'll try to do some IRL streaming for you guys as well at the event and. Yeah, get you guys in the in the back line so you can see everything, but not promises. Just yeah, you know. So yeah, I see MSN is in the chat as well. MSN will probably be the only child there. So oh, Voldemort is there too. So at least oh, you nice. Too. You guys yeah. could have a play date. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> All right. So oh my god, I'm just like whoo whoo. 
<laughs> All right, now on to the next part is we're going to touch on some of the Steel Series plans. And the reason I wanted Tim here for this as well, and if you do see an arm behind me, that is the beastie arm. He's currently sneaking onto the bed behind me to cuddle the dog. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, my co-caster, I keep pointing to the wrong direction. My co-caster here, Ten Foot Tim, is going to be joining us for most of these events. Um, unless he's playing in the finals, of course, which is very plausible if he keeps playing Rus all the way to the top, if people do not ban it. Now, usually the idea was for me and Beastie to host a lot of these events, but unfortunately for us, Beastie is actually really good at this game. And he is going to end up being, you know, in charge uh, of winning these tournaments. So he will not be joining us on the caster desk as much, but we will be hosting these on the Steel Series channel. And I wanted to give you guys some insight on basically what Steel Series' plan is and how willing they are to support the community, which is quite wild. So we have Empire Duos happening on the 28th of this month. First, we have the Women's League Finals, guys. Women's League Finals is happening also on the Steel Series channel, um, just to get people on the channel clicking, you know? So we're going to be hosting the finals there, and then the first official Steel Series event begins on the 28th. Now, the Empire Duos is just a bunch of us playing 2v2s. There will be a Manon and a Whammon, where me and Beastie, Marine Lord, and Luralia, and Puppy Paw and Wham with two of the other Whammons from the Whammons League. So the reason I'm only pointing out our names is because Luralia was the winner of the Whammons Cup, and I am Whammon, you know. The other two girls both have beaten me, so they are better than me, which is why Beastie is going to have to put me on his back and carry me to victory. I'm very scared, but this is going to be our first event, and we initially wanted to host it with a budget of $900, um, and Steel Series has offered us to up that to 5k, which is something I said no to, which we're going to go discuss tomorrow. Um, so we will have some proper announcements, which I, I'm sharing this with you guys because I want you guys to know how much they're going to be pushing into our community. And I want you guys to support, like come to the streams. You don't need to buy anything. You just need to be there. Like, subscribe, tweet. I don't know. I don't Twitter much, but just do the stuff on social media. You guys know how this works. Um, I'm going to ask them if we can maybe have another 2v2 tournament. Um, we had a great idea once we're beastie in the back there. Um, we are thinking about doing the ultimate team gamer where we will be doing a 2v2 tournament, but there are no teams. You are entered as a 1v1 player and you get matched with everyone else in your group and every win counts for you as a team game player because you're winning as a team. And we might transition this into 1v1s and so on. So that's basically it. It's just from the initial standpoint of what they're willing to do for our community is insane. And we're going to be hosting these events often. So we did do a more or less timeline, but the crazy thing is there won't be less events. There might be more, which is wild. So those little dots you see could be two or three. And that's why I kind of want to get you guys in on that. Now, you guys can see Slayer of the Beast is also on the timeline. Beastie is doing that. And we don't know if there's going to be more, but we'll see. Um, but we will want to do a very big one with Steel Series. And the Slayer, uh, Slayer, oh, sorry, Beast of the Hill is the one that Beastie does. But Slayer of the Beast will be everybody plays against Beastie, and every person that beats him gets money. And this is also going to be a fun one where 16 civilizations are available. And the 16 players each have to choose the civilization once. So if that civilization is chosen, you're not going to be able to pick it again. So they're going to have to strategize and see if they can take him down. So yeah, that's basically it uh, for Slayer of the Beast. And then Beast of the Hill, you guys can see there's two of them. That's because Steel Series has offered us 10k for Beast of the Hill style tournaments. And we can decide how to distribute it, whether it is in three tournaments or two tournaments. We'll see. But there will be a lot of tournaments. And this is all the, the whole goal of these. We don't want to do standard 1v1s. We want to make sure that we get tournaments out there that's fun. Because EGC is already covering the standard stuff. We want to make sure that the pro players are able to win more money. Because you need to have enough money in the scene for people to stay in the scene. And make this their career. But you also have to ensure that people who aren't at the top have an opportunity to win something as well. 
because you don't cultivate a pro scene without cultivating the people in the semi-pro scene as well. So we'll be able to get that there too. So those are the overview plans. Yes. Yeah, this, I remember when, <laughs> I forget how many weeks ago this was, but you DM'd me and you were like, yeah, because I was like, oh, we got to talk business because we call each other business partners. <laughs> and I was like, we got to talk business here. And she was like, yeah, um, I'm actually going to meet with Steel Series tomorrow. And I was like, do you want to fucking say that again? Steel, the Steel Series? The Steel Series. They make microphones. I have a Steel Series microphone. It's in my closet. I don't use it. No offense to Steel Series, but I did buy one. I spent money on their product. Okay. And it was a very good headset. Uh, when you told me that, it, it was it was absolutely surreal because you I, I remember you approached me and you were like, hey, we want to do these steel series series and you <laughs> and you uh, uh, you wanted me to be involved and to cast and to participate and all of these kind of things. So and to the fact where I think it was like two weeks ago or something like that steel series rated my channel, the steel series, because Wham and told them to. And uh, I, I, I don't think you realize it. You know, I hate giving you credit for shit. I do. Um, but I don't think you realize how amazing this person is to do all of these things in the AOE4 community and just being an overall good person. I wanted to take the time that all of these things that she, that she figured out and put together and scheduled and has people in order to do all of these things. It's, it's, it's incredible. It re it really is, and I'm 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 honored to not only be a part of this podcast, but to be part of this uh, scene with Seal series on it. And like, it's just it's surreal. Cool. Like, it's it's yeah. awesome. I was thinking about some of the concepts that we're doing, like Empire Doers. We have like a bunch of female players who are gonna play the, with the best people in the world. How insane is that? In what game do you see that? Never. You don't. And you're and, and you're exactly right. Like getting, like. It's it's all well and good to have pro players and have pro scene. Obviously, in any game, in any game that you play, there's going to be a top ten somewhere, right? There's going to be top. But if you have nobody cheering for them, who fucking cares, <laughs> right? Having a having the having the community behind it, having your favorite player, having you know, I see this in AOE too constantly. So many people have a favorite player that they pick for in tournaments and all that kind of stuff. So. We want people that, like how Wayman described it previously in the Women's Cup, these are people that I've coached, I've talked to personally, and they're going to be on the big stage playing with pro p players for this money. It's just, it's, it's amazing. It's like, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so excited to finally be able to give this to people that there's just these chances. And I know I'm very privileged for specific influences that I have that has leg problems behind me. And I'm, I'm really glad that we can find a way to blend these worlds together and get to a point where, I don't know, where we're growing something that I feel like means something. And we're doing this at 30, guys. Come on, and let's just take a moment. <laughs> but you're doing it, I mean, you're doing it for the players, obviously. Yeah. You know, and obviously, and I know, you know, Beastie is helping towards all of that kind of stuff but you're pulling people in not only from the playing scene of people that are you know gold level plat level and they'll play with these professional players you do you do the same thing with your caster here mm. i was a random guy on the internet two years ago you know like there's no like there's no reason why i should be up here right now <laughs> 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 I once tuned into Tim's stream because I love watching small streams and I was like, whoa, this guy's funny as fuck. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, from now on we rate this man until he's exploded. And, and I'm very glad you have kept people so entertained, Tim. You are a 10 out of 10 caster, presenter, streamer, human being. Thank you for being awesome. And thank oh, you for you're... being here. Oh, you suck my ass. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <what's> <laughs> okay, stop. That's this is uh no. Way too sweet. Oh, yes, that's right. Get out yeah, of no, here. That's right. Yeah, that's We have right. to trash talk oh. each other now. Like you can fuck, suck yes. my ass, yeah. Oh my god, go oh. fuck yourself, dude. <laughs> dude <I'm> so... <laughs> <whoa>. <laughs> that's too deep, man. Whoa. God. I know everybody's just waiting for uh, for you to say suck my ass. Oh god, you're you're 
your sayings, I'm starting to use them as well, and I hate it. Are but you I'm... using some hardly knower jokes? I've, I've stopped myself twice today. Yeah. So good for I'm you. really I'm really trying not to use that one. So good for you. honestly, good for Serbia. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to save the country one bad pun at a time. <laughs> I, I just wanted to show you guys quickly on my my headset here. Look at the Steel Series headset with the customizable pink buttons. Isn't that nice? Cool as shit. That. It's Isn't so that. cool. We're gonna get these custom made. Oh yes, oh yes. And I did talk about this in our original announcement. You guys, we're gonna get at these events, not these ones, the LAN ones. We're gonna be getting these custom made uh, Steel Series mouse pads that we're gonna be giving away to people that all the pro players can sign. You can come get a, I don't know, whatever you want with them. Bring your pens, be there with the mouse pad and get your people to sign them. We're gonna get collectibles and make them fun for everyone so that you guys are gonna want to come to these events and you're all gonna feel FOMO if you don't. And every time you don't, we're gonna have a different mouse pad available at those events and you're never gonna get the originals. So you better come. There we go. Never. Never. Yeah. Sorry, exactly. I'm just a hype man in the back. <laughs> I was good. <laughs> I'm just hyping up what you they think. <laughs> So yeah, guys, that is the general overview of the plans. I just wanted to say, this is not it, though. We also have a few people from the community who are asking to sponsor events. And I actually have in my, um, in my DMs, I have our next cup's name. It's going to be a reverse draft showdown. We're also going to have a tournament soon that will be... Um, where people choose their opponent civilizations and the players who are invited have been contacted. So they are all, they don't know exactly the context of it, so there's still some Wait, time. where's I didn't see the message for that. Oh, yeah, no, I haven't sent you the message yet. I was oh. waiting for a logo. I need to go put it into the event calendar. By no, Rising I bet Empires. like as a I bet like as a player, you know. I was a player. I was expecting to get that I was expecting to get that uh that invite message oh you know i'm sorry and, uh, i think your name just slipped sorry dude. yeah yeah okay. it's gonna be a great tournament guys yeah uh, <laughs> you guys should probably watch it it's good stuff it's good stuff <laughs> <God>. <laughs> so yes now age of empires collectibles age of empires tournaments all the poggers things coming your way but yes now what i wanted us to talk about as well is a recent result and this is why we want to do these fun events. It's because what we can see here on our left side is we're seeing the top, the cream of the crop, playing Beastie's tournament, Beast of the Hill. And Tim, how much of this tournament did you watch? And if you say nothing, I won't judge you. So it's okay. I know. No, I did. I did oh. watch some of it. Oh, okay. Okay, you did. Yeah. Um, I watched, I remember, uh, Puppy Paw Streak. Mm. I watched that one. Um, and then... I think I watched some of Anatan's wins in the beginning because I love Anatan. Anatan, I, I I'm not too sure how I feel about Anatan. He did snipe me in an FFA once, so I'm holding oh, a God. grudge. So. Oh my God, you son of bitch! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so this this type of tournament, and you guys can see there were some upsets. I mean, Anatan. I bought him in a in a team game buying tournament where I thought Anatant was going to take down the whole world. And Anatant, I spent so much money on you, but now, <laughs> hopefully, you can keep up this performance with these bad boys in the future. Anatant just completely obliterated these players. And the thing is, when we're looking at these other results as well, there were some serious upsets that we really didn't see coming out of, you know, from any side. Like Cat beating Lucifron, for example. How does that happen? Well, and you know, this is something that I talked about when casting the Elite Classic. Because mm -hmm. these are all, all of these players, well, most of them, I should say, made the final for the Elite Classic. Mm -hmm. I think there's, there's a couple other uh, ones that did not make it here who are part of these games, but all of those players, they all deserve to win. They're all super good players. And you're really, when it comes to, when it comes to the differences between these players, it almost feels like you're splitting hairs between someone who's 16 and 15 and 15 and 14 and 14 and 13 and so on. Obviously the hairs add up 
as you get deeper in the you know the numbers but basically everybody has a shot to beat everybody and i talked about i talked about this yesterday too with there we're getting different players winning these very high tier events i think the last three that one because energy slap fest wham ended up taking that one uh marine lord won one of these beastie won one of these so you're never walking into a tournament being like why am i watching this i know who's gonna win we don't have a viper effect right now and it's a lot of fun because you don't know what's gonna happen yeah this is the the fact that we have a format that we can actually encourage players to train strategies anatan just said we trained cat with cat his strategy a bit and that's mm -hmm. insane that you can strategize to take down lucifron and you can see for example crackety also beating wham wham it's it's just something that you don't ever get the opportunity to do. And this is why we want to see more of these fun tournaments getting out. So yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this tournament, because I did. I loved it. I yeah, loved it real good. good. Um, <laughs> then what I wanted to share with you guys as well from my side is the Women's League, where we're at. And we do have our uh, standings, which I must say, I am getting my ass clapped. <laughs> and um, I did not expect this. These girls are making me feel like I am um, trash. And that's okay. That's okay. We're, we're all a little bit of trash on the inside, right? But they, they really, really have beaten me down. You can see here in our rankings, not all of the people have played the um, same amount of games. But Nostromia, oh my goodness. She's disgustingly good. Oh, she's just taking down everything and everyone. I am getting my ass beat. Uh, I'm scared of all these players above me. Absolutely every single one. I was so glad when I could beat some of these players that I... Oof, it was just fantastic. But most of these players are just... We're seeing now the competitiveness that we have in the female scene, which is wild. I never thought that we would have this opportunity. And by the way, we're getting ATR points. So we're going to join the ranks of all these players. Oh. Which is funny. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have ATR now. I'm gonna be ranked above someone who is probably Conqueror three. <laughs> <laughs> With my big tournament performance, what can I say? Yeah. That's a good one. That's, that's a good one. That's a destruction. I remember, Ooh. I remember when I uh when we did the Women's Cup before the league, and a lot of these players I remember uh casting Lyra and I remember casting, let's see, Bella was in there too. That we did and like they're good they're good players you know i mean this is even this is going to be the premier league because we have this in an open division right there's a one that's full of mostly players that are if i remember correctly it's below diamond right mm. so all of all of those players they impress me they really do because you look at a player and you know there's probably a lot of times where you think about somebody and they're like, oh, they're gold. They don't know, they, they don't know shit. They don't know how to play a game. They don't know how to, you know, whatever. But then you watch them play and you're like, no, they have, a, they have an idea of what's going on. They're good players. You know, they just might need a little extra, extra nudge or an extra mm. little bit of tips to step in the right direction. And then they end up catapulting, you know, and some of these, they're so good. They really are. I wish for the league just because we did it. it. It's open style, so everybody played everybody. For the open division, we had 19 girls that signed up. Yeah. So casting all of them was never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> right? So at least for the playoffs, though, we have a dedicated day. Uh, yeah, where mm. we can see everyone and who actually won through all of that. It's going to be... Ugh. It's been my favorite tournament, I think, in Age of Empires so far. I just wish we had more yeah. opportunities to cast it. I was in South Africa for such a big part of it, and I was so I sad. But even now, I should just sit down and plan ahead. I might do a few of the casted games this weekend just to get a few up on YouTube. Because mm -hmm. there have been some community casters who are covering some of these games, but I need to put more work in. You guys know, juggling a full-time job, doing the stuff that you guys saw today, and this as well, I'm kind of drowning at the moment, but yeah. I'll figure it out. It's okay. You guys, you guys probably have heard of my friend Burnout and Stress. Yeah, we're really good friends. We're managing it. You actually, I picture you underwater with a big straw. 
and you're just <laughs> like that's above water and you're just trying to suck air you're like i just need a little bit like <laughs> you're it's I, I don't know how you do the things you do every day because i feel like i don't do as much as you do on a daily basis <sighs> I, I don't think it's it's that that deep yet, Tim. But no no more compliments. Stop it. Oh, Stop yeah, it. We yourself. have to trash talk What's, one another. Uh, <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Eat shit. What's the <laughs> next? Uh, <laughs> what's the next topic? We're running uh, for about an hour and a half here. Yeah yeah. I was gonna say we might need to cut some of our topics because this is gonna be a four hour night. I just wanted yeah, to I touch on something that Twitch chat has noticed. There, I AI generated this picture. Please don't judge me. Um, but there is a little animal. Uh, here, uh, there's a little pig at the front just under my name. I'm going to move my name right under the animal. And you can see that <laughs> there's like a, a goat or a cow or something that's dressed in, in some outfit. <laughs> that's our producer, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he, is a, he is a wonderful ensemble. Why don't you go ahead and do a little turn on the cow walk, Cal? <laughs> <laughs> It's a dog though. That's what like that's like a cow goat or something. I don't know. Ooh. It's a coat. It's a cow and a goat. <laughs> it's a coat. It's a coat in a coat. <laughs> oh god. Woo! Top tier quality, I'm telling you guys. Yeah. This is what you get from me. Hell yeah. Oh. oh. How the fuck how the fuck are we gonna follow that up? Oh, how do uh. we even <laughs> think about this? My god. So there are some things that we wanted to touch on tonight. Um, but what I wanted to... We could, honestly, we could probably just save it. Save for it for the episode. next time. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we could. <laughs> that's actually a really good idea. I, I want to touch on one more thing. And that's okay, the strategy. Um, recently, Voldemort has coached me and Beastie has coached me. Which, completely opposite brains. Brain styles. I wanted to say play styles and... I don't know what I wanted to say, but... I'm going to call this brain styles. Um, so Voldemar encouraged me to be very aggressive early game. Super, super aggressive. And just overwhelm your opponent. No upgrades. Upgrades are overrated, I remember. And I destroyed people. Absolutely destroyed them. It was insane. Then Beastie told me the opposite. He told me, you have to focus on getting your upgrades and tempo, 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 which is something I didn't consider. And he explained how Voldemort, what Voldemort told me and why it's, it can be good and not, and why I need to consider this. And the thing is, it's the difference between a cheese and getting to the late game. So this is one thing that I've been struggling with as well, because early game, I do struggle with harassing anyway. And with Voldemort's help, I completely overcame that guys if you need a good coach go to Voldemort the man will change your life but <laughs> with Beastie I just I I see how his brain works and how he understands it at a, such a deep level because of how good he is and how he sees that decision you made in the first five minutes transporting into minute 25 in the game so I wanted to ask you Tim as a diamond a conqueror-ish player um what is your <laughs> chosen play style so i we touched on it a little bit in the mm -hmm. the patch notes i really really like this game when i'm interacting with my opponent mm -hmm. if my opponent is making continuous choices not to interact with me i get so annoyed right um this is creepy <laughs> This is creepy. I'm trying to. I'm trying to have a conversation here. And... Yeah, for, for those of you listening, Beastie is just glaring over my shoulder, and yeah. Tim is looking at his face. And it's sleep. yeah, it's it's killing me. It's haunting me. Oh my god, is that a ghost? It's, it's gone. A ghost. It's a ghost. Um, okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, anyway, I love 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 more in Valdemar's area, mm. where I want to be proactive. I want to get the sieves that the earliest as possible, make a bunch of units, and make my opponent interact with me. You want to make walls? You want to make a town center? You want to go ahead for late game? I'm going to make it hell for you to get there. And if you do end up getting there, then I leave. Because I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's how it works. Oh God. Oh well. Yep. <laughs> That's that, that's exactly how it works. I played, I played a game where, I remember. I think it was there was a guy who was playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, and I was playing as the Byzantines. Mm-hmm. And he made no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, he was playing as English. He made four town centers. I took down two of them. Mm-hmm. He still flooded my base with men at arms, and then Berkshired me. So, for people that have that. Like they have such a reactive play style and they let the game come to them and mm-hmm. they do all of these economic things where basically if it were their choice, they would rather play on their own. They're playing <laughs> they're, like, like they're playing city skylines in terms of booming and all of that kind of stuff. I hate that. I absolutely hate that. I'm playing multiplayer because I want to make mm-hmm. units and I want to destroy your landmarks and I want to get in your face. I want to make idle time. I want to kill villagers. I want to do all that kind of stuff. So definitely, definitely, definitely where Valdemar is. Beastie, he's so good in late game. We know that. We watch him. How good he is in the late game. He's good at... It, basically, there's a lot of players that I can see, and especially because they're late game, where there's a lot of people playing checkers and they're playing chess, right? Because you're thinking about the game four steps ahead, being that how is that going to affect me in the late game, Right. Me personally, the late game does not exist. This limit does not exist. So I just don't want to play Siege Wars. I don't like doing that. So I choose not to. I had one uh, stream a couple days ago where another uh, there was a guy that hit Imperial Age. And the guy literally said in chat, he was like, hey, can you wrap this game up? I got stuff to do. And I'm like, yeah, dude, for sure. Then I left. I just hit quit. I left the game. Didn't care. <laughs> don't want to do it. Wow. Okay, so we definitely have two sides of the opposite coin. And this is why you struggle to end against 2TC, even if you counter the civilization. Completely, right. I I have this very, and if if people watch my stream, they're probably sick of me bitching about this, but it's, I, I really, really don't like how, when you get to Castle Age and mid Castle Age, say, people start making siege. So you have to build springholds, and then your opponent has to make springholds to counter your springholds. But you have to make more springholds to counter their springholds than they use to counter your springholds. And then it becomes whoever has the most springholds wins the game. And I know I'm I know I'm really simplifying it all, but so I have multiple experiences that I can count on. I would need more hands to be like that guy had more springholds than me, so he won the game. And I don't like it, so I don't do it. <laughs> Just like I don't like walls, so I don't build them. Because <laughs> you don't like delaying the game. You want to be inside yeah. of them. Okay, got it. Right. You don't need walls if you're being offensive all the time, in theory, right? They don't have time to raid you if they're dealing with their defense. I know. It's a bad strategy. Just you talk now. Oh, well. No, no, no. <laughs> this is two opposite sides of the coin. I mean, most people in gold and under do not relate to being aggressive nonstop. And I, I think that comes in with my personality as well. I'm, I'm a little bit, I know it doesn't seem like it, but I'm a little bit passive in, in the game. I, I want to see what my opponent's doing so I can react to it. But most of the time I don't scout well enough. So I just, I'm surprised I'm like, whoa, where did the 50 minute arms come from? I do not have any crossbows. You're running into 20 of my archers. That's great. And yeah, I should be more proactive, Tim. I think that we do have, a definite best of seven show match scheduled for later this year so we can figure this See, one out and what's great is like we can kind of learn from each other yeah right because you you want to delay the game mm-hmm. you want to do those things so because you you do it well because if you if you didn't do it well then why the fuck would you want to do it <laughs> you're just asking to lose games if you're not going to late game why are you delaying games <laughs> you know that doesn't make any sense so i like going all in in feudal age and early castle age and winning and i'm kind of at the point where i would rather lose elo i think i'd i would rather lose elo points than play more imp games yeah oh spicy (laughs) oh my gosh and guys that is but it could be just because i'm not good at it yeah yeah you know so that is how we can see where 10 for tim is going to be in two months 
Diamond three. Yes, <laughs> diamond three. Because I'm gonna yep. every time I see him hit conqueror, I'm going to snipe him, and I'm going to build three TCs. I'm gonna build walls, and I'm gonna build tower my gold, and then what? Yeah. Yeah, then he's going to leave the game. I'll just get frustrated until he throws something out this window. Or and not something on it's his gonna desk. Be, the, the throwing is going to be myself. I'm going to throw myself out the window. <laughs> I'm not going to want to deal with it. I like what Avely said in chat. If you ever match up against Tim, just stow wall and Ooh. go imp. Literally, like, I, I, just, I just completely, like, I just lose my mind. <laughs> I just, like, oh, my God. How do I beat, beat horse archers, though? I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Nobody should know. Okay. It's actually, it's very difficult. Um, it's one of the units that you can't counter at all. Mm. No matter what you do, <laughs> there will be, there will be horse archers. <laughs> there will. Okay. <laughs> but you no, guys... it's just, honestly, it's just walls and outposts. Okay. They count them. That's it. No, just, oh God, that... Yeah. I, I mean, archers are. a secret. I, I mean, like archers are cost effective mm -hmm. against horse archers, but you're still going to need a decent amount of them. But. To stop, because horse archers are good at raiding. They're good at killing villagers. They're good at kiting. So if you make them get outposts mm -hmm. and walls so they can't get it in the first place, mm -hmm. what are they going to do? Cry? Die? They're just going to sit there. Yeah, yeah they're just going to sit there and take 1,500 arrows to kill your palisade wall. Oh. <laughs> right? Oh, that's so. true. Arrows aren't that great against wood. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, I've never yep. tried to chop down a tree with arrows, but I can't imagine it's quite tedious. Yeah, like a death, death by a thousand paper cut situation. Oh, you know? well, that, don't keep put that in my head. Oh my god! Oh, that you've sounds... never heard that phrase? No, no, oh I did god. not. I'm sorry, I'm not a native English speaker like you. Man, you and your America, and America's your... so fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys, <laughs> That's masochistic, so right? Damn. Yeah. Damn. Well, guys, that brings us to the end of our, I guess, uh, hour long discussion we had about. Age of Empires. And we will leave some content for next time. We will be doing this in about one month and I'll be a little bit more proactive with marketing and we'll announce it in different places. So, yes, we'll probably see you guys around the 5th or 4th of May until I have my podcast layout list finished. Alright? Then, until next time, guys, goodbye.